senior lecturer at Victoria University of Wellington. Uh, my main research area is um, education in the digital age. In the digital age, there's not only digital tools available for teaching and learning, there's also metadata underpinning the use of the various tools in the internet that can be used within education. People are connected, um, connected beyond just the classroom environment. Um, so there's, there's a lot of difference between a digital age and how learning can occur to a pre-digital age. One of the aspects I've been researching is the digital divides and how that is framed up in um, education. What my research has shown is that there are three digital divides and other people have identified this as well. The first digital divide is an access one. The access digital divide includes um, access to devices. So in schools, do students have access to devices? They may be um, limited by money, um, who can afford it, whether families have to buy those or whether the school buys those for the students, and it can be limited by beliefs about whether people believe that this is a good thing to do or not. Um, and there can be some interesting socio-economic um, differences where some of the wealthier parents don't want their children to use the devices in schools, whereas those from low socio-economic areas were desperate for the um, to have the children using the devices in schools. The second type of access is the internet access. Um, so whether you have internet access or not. In New Zealand there is um, fast broadband internet access in all of our schools, but not so in the homes. Um, so we've just got to be a bit careful when we talk about access that it's quite nuanced as to who has who has access and what sort of access they have and whether it's data only and whether it's constrained access and that tends to, to be around socio-economic, there's more constrained access for those in the socio-economic areas. So the second type of digital divide is around competence and capability. What? One of my PhD students, Tara Evans, she did some study within um, intermediate schools which are like 11 and 12 year olds. And she found that the teachers there believed that the students were digital natives and therefore they didn't need to be taught the use. They assumed that they were competent and capable. Um, whereas when she observed them, some of the students were and some of them weren't. And so the teachers that were following this model of the competent ones would teach the others. Um, the others um, who weren't competent didn't actually learn because the competent ones would just take over, they'd get frustrated with the others. Um, so she found that actually you needed to do deliberate acts of teaching. If there were certain competences and capabilities that you wanted your students to have, you actually had to teach them those particular things. And I think that is probably where the idea of digital natives has actually done a lot of harm in the education sector because there have been assumptions about about the children and I think that might widen a digital divide. Third one is um, participation. That there's a, there's a divide between those that participate in a digital world and those that don't. So those from low socioeconomic areas who don't have the agency um, are, are not influencing the politics. Um, they, they're not participating economically within the internet even though they are participating a lot socially. I see this as an important aspect of education and that how can we teach our young people, particularly those from disadvantaged homes, um, how they can participate um, in the future in the digital world. So how can we... Firstly, thinking about that competence and capability um, to not assume that the children are digital natives and that they need to be directly taught the sort of skills that will help them in the future and that will help them access the curriculum now. Um, and to consider how, how you can incorporate an active participation within whatever it is that you're teaching. It's about developing agency, political and social agency within the society in which you live. So it's understanding the structures and knowing how you can actually use the digital world to, um, to put your ideas across and to be active within that.